you know, one thing I learned from working in banking is that you can have a lot of money and still be miserable. Yeah. Yes. You, can, you can you can be in situations where you have a lot of intelligence but you don't have any emotional intelligence yeah. you can be in situations where you're you know striving for more but still feeling completely lost It's time to stop spinning your wheels, wasting time, money, and energy building your brand alone on social media. Hi, I'm Sophia Spolino, the host of Social Equity, the podcast, here to help you build your own profitable personal brand, the social equity you can rely on to make the money that you deserve. Are you ready, Miss Future Millionaire? Let's get into it. When you see money as Skittles, you treat it differently. When you see money as easy as energy, you treat it differently because it's easy to get more Skittles. My friend and guest, Rebecca Davidson, is an energetic alignment coach, an intuitive guide and spiritual mentor. She's the founder of Intuitive Life Academy, the premium learning establishment to help you live from your soul. Rebecca worked in the banking industry for 13 years the high end side. During her time, she worked in private banking for high net worth customers. And she saw these clients treated money very differently from others who are running on fear, scarcity, and lack. These learnings became a key component of her work later on as an intuition coach to help others develop true abundance. She now helps people become the energetic match to exactly what they desire. This involves harnessing and mastering spiritual power and leaning in and choosing expansion at the highest levels. Her clients experience unprecedented levels of success and experience fulfillment. Welcome to the show, Rebecca Davidson. I'm so For everyone tuning in, we have a money master coming on here live. So if you have questions, interrupt us and drop them in the chat. (laughs) How are you today, Rebecca? I'm really great, Sophia. Thank you so much for having me. It's so lovely to be here and connect. This is awesome. You're amazing. Here with you. Oh my gosh. I really connected with your energy, especially when you had me on your show. Before we even did the show, you were so intentional about making sure we aligned and had like a pre-interview. And I was like, this is really nice. You yeah. care. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm very, um, I'm like you said, you said yourself, I'm passionate about seeing people win. Yeah. You know, like, and, and authenticity and integrity and actually uh, living to those values, not just talking about it, but actually going, what does it mean to have integrity? What does it mean to be authentic? Really yeah. asking ourselves the deeper questions. I'm very deep. We're going to go deep let's, today. <laughs> let's go deep. I want to start with your money story, maybe even your childhood story, because I know that's important mm-hmm. to work through for everyone listening. As we listen to Rebecca's story, start thinking about your life story and maybe reflect on where there's some kinks or where where things need to be checked out. So tell us yours, Rebecca. Uh, This is such a great question, too, because I don't have the same narrative as a lot of people um, like yourself. I actually came up through a a very wealthy background. And it's so funny, too, looking back on it, because a lot of people really love that rags to riches story. But there's also pitfalls and challenges in coming from a wealthy background. I actually had a lot of shame, even as a teenager, that I went to a private school. And I felt very disconnected from other people. And I don't know if you know that song, Common People. I wanted to be like everybody else. I didn't want to be singled out. I had teachers yelling at me, telling me that I'd been born with a silver spoon in my mouth and feeling completely out of control in relationship to that experience. So I actually had a lot of conflict with inside of myself about growing up and being privileged and Mm -hmm. trying to reconcile that was extremely uncomfortable because 
there seems like it's more noble if you're having this great challenge where you have the scarcity and then you overcome it and then you rise into a place whereas other people were you know demeaning you in a lot of ways saying it's all right for you you've got rich parents mm -hmm. and it's like okay well what do i do with that how mm -hmm. does that you know like where do i take that and um but at the same time you know one thing i learned from working in banking is that you can have a lot of money and still be miserable yeah. Yes. You, can, you can you can be in situations where you have a lot of intelligence but you don't have any emotional intelligence yeah. you can be in situations where you're you know striving for more but still feeling completely lost so the banking industry was really helpful because it helped me to see that there is definitely money psychology that goes on and if we're not paying attention to that we're missing out because one thing that's really important to me as an intuition coach and guide it's not just about making money mate it's about fulfillment it's about satisfaction it's about knowing yourself as complete and that's super important in terms of integrity and authenticity, right? Like to honestly say, like I'm making money the way that I want to make it. Yeah. As opposed to being in a situation where we're just being pushed around by external forces. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess my money story, it's, it's yeah, being contrast. There's been a lot of contrast. And it's not like I haven't known scarcity. You know, like I've... I yeah, guess, how, what do you mean? Yeah, a lot of litmus testing. I had a circumstance that this was probably within the last 10 years after I'd started my business. I had $5 in my bank account. I had a maxed out credit card. I had, I'd already borrowed some money off my parents and I was in free fall, completely freaking out. I had a thousand dollar mortgage payment that was due the next day. And I was, I was completely stressed about it, you know, working from the mental body and, and the mind and wanting to go, okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll go and I'll go and find a client or I'll do something to solve this problem yeah. and being petrified and wow. asking the universe, right? And what's it going to take for there to be money in my bank account by the time I get home today? Drove home, opened up my bank account. There's over, you know, there's five figures in my bank account. Wow. Uh, uh, and again, like when you have experiences like these and you realize that you can actually create beyond your mind and beyond your emotions, that there's this energy field, some people call it spirit, some people call it consciousness, that actually does have your back, that is communicating with you all the time. And when you start learning how to communicate with it, it's going to bring you awareness or opportunities or resources you can harness your power as the creator being and start moving into creating a life that looks really really different yeah. than uh, most people yeah. and i know that you know about that because you have faith i do faith, I just, and faith is so important it really it is and like mm -hmm. do you feel like you were able to create that um with that from momentum that you had built and actions that you took or was it truly just in that moment like something unexplainable happened where it was in your bank account now that is a great question you know why because i was talking about this in context too a lot of people get confused you have your mind you have your emotions you have your physical body and then you have your energetic field spirit as you might like to call it your energetic body what happens is a lot of people think I have to think positively I have to be happy in order to create now what that experience did for me is it made me realize no you don't because I was completely freaked out my mind was going overdrive and then my emotions were all over the place I was petrified and it still turned up so what was so it makes sense Yes, right? Like, and this is where the human experience loves to try and control. Like, if I, if you'd said to me, how did you do that? I would be like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how I did that, right? From the level of mind. Yeah. But there was still part of me that made the choice to ask. There was still part of me that was like, okay, yes, I need this to come in now. I was still, even though I was frightened and even though my mind was ticking off, I was still choosing to show up 
to the experience of this lack of money. And that's where it really showed me that my energy was having a big part in this experience of going, yes, there is something beyond your mind that is actually there supporting you, helping you to create. Yeah. And that's why I love helping people to identify where are you in terms of your manifestation. A lot of people get stuck in the head and they get stuck in the emotions. Mm -hmm. And you really need to keep those, if there is a channel, you need to keep them clear to be able to do all the other things, right? Wanna... Like navigating those two channels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to keep your emotions in check and have people around you that are positive so you can keep all these things moving and and, mm -hmm. and and keep that momentum going. We just got a question from Jody Tosher says, does this align with manifestation and or the law of attraction? Yeah. That's a great question. I love to you because manifestation is used a lot in marketing. I yes. prefer to swap that out with creation mm -hmm. to help people realize because often people hear the word manifestation and think that's something that I need to go do yeah. or learn and to bring it back to you're already doing it. Yes. Right? You're, yes. you're already doing it, but are you doing it consciously? And then the consciousness comes from where's my head at? Where are my emotions at? What's happening in my body? Does it feel safe to bring in more money? Often it happens through the body. And how am I relating to my energy field? Mm -hmm. And once we get these things all dialed in, which makes you a very happy, harmonious person, things can unfold with a lot of ease, even if you're afraid, even if your mind's telling you it's not possible, because you're working with this greater field of energy. Yes. So a lot of people, yes, think law of attraction and you're doing that all the time anyway. But yeah. the question then becomes, do you like what you're attracting? Oh, yeah. that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's when you have to pivot what's going on in your mind and adjusting those thoughts. But what's the first step if someone's never done it before? to mm -hmm. ad adjustment because is it starting with your thoughts is it starting with your actions is it starting with your beliefs what's the first step for people i think most people would be like it starts with your thoughts because your thoughts are always there you know how they just keep on coming up they're like the popcorn that just keeps on popping and to start creating a little bit of space between yourself and the thoughts and that's what you can do immediately is go other thoughts right up in here or can I just push it back a little bit like I'm watching a movie screen to create some space between yourself and the thoughts? The true you is the observer of your experience, right? It's it's not as observing, not actually in it. Because when we're like, you know, the best analogy I actually ever heard was um, your thoughts are like the cars that go past the window and your mind is like the little dog that's watching the cars. If the little dog runs out into traffic, like your mind runs into the thoughts, oh. you're going to get run over. So recognizing that the thoughts, are, you want to observe them. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Look at my mind yelling at that person in the car in front of me. Or, oh, look at that judgment I have on that person. Or, oh, look at the judgment I have about that person who's made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And this is where we start yes harnessing this relationship like okay i'm just observing but what is it that i'm actually thinking that's so good that's so good and really a belief is just something that we've thought over and over and over again so if we could start and step back the other day one of my friends from yoga was telling me um when she's feeling challenged she will think of the word space because it's a neutral word and i love that you just used it because we create space and we can step back and always go, we're okay. And one thing that I would equate successful people to doing is we're able to look at anything going on and go, but no matter what, I'm going to succeed. So you're able to put space between what's going on, the thoughts, and just be like, but it doesn't matter because I'm a winner, because I decided. Mm -hmm. and it's really powerful yes do you feel like and i um i love that because that's very in alignment because if you're looking at frequency or consciousness or your higher self or spirit as people may call it your higher self wants you to win yeah it wants 
expect you to be in that place of like, of course, of course, it's inevitable. It doesn't, it's not dependent on your emotions, but at the same time, you're going to know if you're stuck. Yeah. Right. Like if you're hashing out an emotion over and over because there's no completion or resolution or closure, whatever the mid case may be, you're going to know that your body's going to tell you. Mm. So to get, clarity through all these different channels just makes it so much easier to be in that place of no matter what's happening i can handle it no matter what emotion comes up i'm still good and that is what spirit does because spirit is an acceptance of all of it and loves you no matter what you're thinking saying or doing amen yeah Yeah, it's like (laughs) but to get to that to get to that belief takes practice it's like a muscle you've got to think this thought over and over in these positive thoughts about yourself one thing that really wealthy people tend to do is they must be thinking some different thoughts about money and i know that you saw that in your career that you worked Mm -hmm. in high level banking like what was the different thoughts that you saw wealthy people hold about money and mm-hmm. maybe even some funny things that you saw that just didn't make sense. Well, I guess the analogy that comes in is the, you know, is this happening to me or through me? You know, mm-hmm. how we are or as me, right? Like we are, the day before I actually went and started working in private bank, I had a woman come into the bank and she ended up screaming and yelling at me because she'd spent all her money at the casino, bless her, and then she needed money to buy her daughter nappies. And I couldn't help help her because it didn't meet credit policy and she was so upset and she was so angry and screaming and swearing and I felt so sorry for her but I could not give her an overdraft facility. The next day I started working in private bank and somebody on the phone, the customer, I they rang up and they said hello it's Rebecca here, welcome to private bank and they said oh Rebecca it's so nice to meet you and I was like wow right like the contrast and who that person was being so I spent a lot of time studying what is the difference and obviously the person previously was feeling like life was happening to her whereas the frequency of the people that I was working with there were varying levels of consciousness because you can still have a lot of money and be miserable but the people that were very aware conscious and living in more fulfillment were people who were like, money is something that moves through me, Mm. or even as me, like this is me choosing how I'm directing energy, the choices that I'm making, the experience that I'm having, they're taking complete 100% ownership of that, and making it work to their advantage. Money was very um, impartial a lot of the times, there was less emotional attachment to it, it was more like a tool that is helping this person to direct the energy in a way that served them. So, yeah, very different perception of what money is. And everybody has a money story, and it's so worth unpacking it, not because of the story itself, but for you to help identifying how you attribute meaning. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the most powerful things you can do is question your own beliefs Mm. to go, well, okay, I'm attributing meaning in this way. And a a really simple example, right? If you see somebody and they have a really expensive, beautiful flash car, can you be pleased for them? Mm. Or is there an internal narrative where it's like, "Mm," you know, like I think you're a such and such because you drive that vehicle as opposed to really blessing them with five more because you understand that when you bless somebody, you're blessing yourself. Mm. You understand and when you're saying, oh, I want more abundance for you, you're offering that to yourself. I love that. Which is, yeah, because you're identified with this. This is, you know, really from the Bible, you can't receive what you judge. Oh, yes, except that many Christians do. (laughs) Exactly, right? Exactly. But the totality of it, which is, you might receive the vehicle, but you're not going to receive the fulfillment. 100%. I I cannot describe, like, this, the same way that I felt the first time I could walk into a grocery store after leaving my ex-husband and finally feeling like I could spend $200 on groceries was so so powerful and it's that same level of joy every time i spend two thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars it's the same thing it's like 
just feel it where you can mm -hmm. and feel that fulfillment in the smallest ways and then look mm -hmm. for it in other ways and it will yes. multiply. Yes. It That's will why multiply. you want to get excited about five yep. bucks. Yes. You know, like, like a lot of people are like eh, because they are attributing the meaning through the value. Oh, it's only five dollars. Yeah, it's nothing, right? As opposed to like, what can you receive for your five dollars? You can have a, a huge heartfelt moment with a friend over a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, like there is there's joy and pleasure in it if you put it there. there is. <laughs> this is, yes, and this is where we want to be the master of like how I attribute meaning. Am I doing it in a way that creates happiness for me and fulfillment? And then, of course, when I do that, that's going to shift not just my mind, my emotions, my physical body, but my energetic field. So everything gets to rise. Yeah. And then I get to have these amazing experiences. And this is how we can bring in money quickly. Mm, yeah. Mm, okay. To, okay. Yeah, to let go of expectations around because you know like when you have manifested something, like when you've had a big month month in your yeah. business, your brain didn't know. No. Did it? Like your brain did not go, I know this is gonna happen. Really. It was like I would like that to happen. That's why we have to understand that your brain, your mind, the stories, the thoughts actually the least powerful part of yourself okay you know, yeah you, you know this like your subconscious is like the ice cube right and it's much bigger and it holds all the beliefs and the patterns and the conditioning mm. but that's why your intuition is so powerful because your intuition will show you just like that what the belief system is and then when you bring it to your awareness you're like is this actually serving me no it's not i'm going to release it so i can expand more into my true self which is this energy and then it makes it so easy for what you desire to come in and wow like, yeah a lot of people experience a lot of quantum shifts and leaps and jumps because they're prepared to go beyond their mind yeah just for that experience i told you about like that did not happen because i yeah. created it from my mind right so we have to be willing to create a relationship with something that is unseen and intangible and that's really what you might call faith yeah to be the person who's willing to do that and it has to come from somewhere small pick something to be able to focus on evidence of something good and exactly. believing that source god whatever it is for you is actually good is probably one of your first steps because if you believe that like the universe is working against you mm -hmm. you're gonna have to move through that belief before you can get anywhere else and i think that's part of a spiritual initiation isn't it like everybody's had those experiences where it feels like life is crushing you yeah Oh my goodness, can it get any worse? And then it does. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Okay, so you grew up with the silver spoon, but then you, you yes. did have challenges and you've been able to create wealth for yourself. And maybe you did have those moments where you're like, life get, could life get worse? What were those mm -hmm. for you? And how did you crawl out? Like when you needed that money, what had happened? Like what transpired to get to that point? Yeah, I love my brother and sister, but my relationship with my brother and sister has been extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is estrangement there. I'm not going to be dishonest about that. And it has been like living with a, a living death mm -hmm. and not happening just once, but happening twice. And that is, that's a challenge that I wouldn't wish on anybody. Yeah. You know, like when you've been through it yourself and it's so distressing and the need for safety and trying to create safety and difficult situations and, you know, all the emotion that comes with that. But also, too, because of my identity of growing up and my parents were hard work workers, they weren't necessarily cash rich, but they were asset rich. So there wasn't always like money for holidays and things like that. But... It was so important to me and I actually attribute a lot of my success to my brother and sister oh. because I've, I've had to forgive them to be able to be truly abundant because a lot of people don't realize that if you have people who are unforgiven in your world, yes. that creates a kink in your hose and that is going to limit resources, how much the universe can give to you. And it's not like the universe is Santa Claus, but it was so important to me that I, because of my background, that I did it myself, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I was 
always the one like me do it me do it i want to do it for myself i want to prove to myself that i've got what it takes yes. and i do directly contribute a lot of my success to my brother and sister because it was so challenging that after those situations anything else is like a walk in the park mm. and i love what you say about forgiveness i didn't even get into you with this on your podcast but mm -hmm. i have a viral song called my healing that's all about forgiveness mm -hmm. and it's it's based on the whole pono prayer as well mm -hmm. as uh a course in miracles teachings of jesus yes. um and it's so crazy because forgiveness is not for the other person it is for us to be able to move forward mm. and the line that everyone really loves is forgiveness is not condoning it's letting the past letting go of the past controlling this present moment now so i can be here now yes. and it's crazy how it unlocks so much yes. so much and yes. i i tell people that about like telling your story on social media Mm -hmm. that takes forgiveness forgiveness to yourself or forgiveness of other people and then you got to tell it and that unlocks something magical have you told your story on your social media about your siblings or you keep it more private? no I, I guess too because you know like I, yeah i mean like that is that's an edge for me for sure i guess in regards to wanting to protect their privacy but also too you know that's definitely something that obviously an invitation here to explore it yeah. and you know like i what's been really important to me is to make sure that my emotional energy field is calm yeah. about that because you know how like um you can talk about an experience but if you're still activated and your emotions about it yeah. it doesn't land as well as if you're neutral but i'm kind of tuning into my intuition right now and kind of getting that you know you're good you could speak to this because you just have yeah. <laughs> but also too that um yeah like what does it take to because everybody has massive challenges everybody has something that happens in their world especially if you're a light worker it's a given yeah it is a given that you will experience deep contrast because the universe god is calling to you asking you to become this person this frequency this energy that can transcend anything and that that takes work it takes work to be the person to go okay there's still anger present or love is lacking because the unforgiveness is kinking the hose and what does it take to do that you know like my dad passed away three years ago and you know like i was asking myself what do i need to do in order to propel my business forward and i've done a lot of work in regards to forgiving my brother but i literally heard my dad's voice i was like oh, i suppose i could do some more forgiveness work with my brother and i heard my dad's voice go yes <laughs> so you know in spirit so it was like you know like if you're willing to communicate with spirit it will tell you everything that you need to know it will show you your blind spots yeah. and i think that's hugely important because people can't see their own blind spots but spirit will show you no problem <laughs> as long as you ask you will receive but you got to be open to it oh my goodness. yes that's exactly right and it's confronting right it's it confronting to hear the truth and to go you know this is literally blocking you from being the person that you wish to become yeah. uh, and how do you how how do you feel like the forgiveness directly corresponds with abundance do you have client examples <clears throat> like do you have yeah, a totally. you i know it works but i just want people out there to hear it for themselves um oh yeah i've got a client who you know like she she's had a very difficult time with her mom and you know there's probably some narcissistic traits there for her mother <coughs> and i say that you know l you know lightly but not so lightly because you, you have to study narcissism to really know what it is right yeah. but also too that she excuse me oh, you're <coughs> she went through a journey with her mom this is interesting <coughs> Yes. Um, sometimes you don't want to share a story. You don't have to. It's like God's like, don't share a story. You don't no, have to. no, like this happens to me sometimes if somebody doesn't want to hear it. But um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes, right. I'll just take a moment if that's okay. Take a moment. <coughs> Get it out. 
Yeah. I, mean, I fight with allergies <laughs> in the spring, so I'm always the friend that's like, got a Kleenex in my bra. Uh, my partners <laughs> always see Kleenex in the partner when I have a partner, but always sees Kleenex in the bed, just everywhere. It's just, I'm covered. So you're a safe place here to call. Thank you. I appreciate it. Even though I can tell there's, you know, you can hear it, right? There's still a bit of contraction there. So what happened is her relationship with her mum was tricky. It's difficult, you know, like when you felt really judged by somebody, really, that everything that you do was wrong. You know, that was really her experience with her mum. And doing the forgiveness work, she calls her herself a lazy manifester but she's been incredible in the respect that you know like when she started doing a program with me it's called elegant wealth and it's about making money elegant right having an elegant relationship with it <clears throat> what happened for her the first time is like t uh, two weeks in, and she had a thirty thousand dollar pay increase Wow. And that might have been there a little bit in her awareness that maybe that was a possibility. But then she did the program with me again. And then she experienced like a $40,000 pay increase. That's a right. lot. So, yeah, right. So now she's, and, and, and again, even to calibrate that through the physical body, that really comes back to letting go of these old identities. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, is that sorry? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> it was yours. Right. To be the person who's willing to let go of those, to be the person, the old identities, to be the person that it's safe to experience this, it's safe to have this, it's safe yeah. to calibrate yes. into this. And that really does come back to shifting the energy inside of yourself you don't do it just for the purpose of creating more money because the the ego mind loves that idea i'll oh, forgive them to create more money you can't lie to energy no you, do, you actually have to do it and then your world opens up and with that expansion comes more abundance yeah and you know i know a lot of people talk about the numbers and their business but the numbers are just often a reflection Right, of where things are at, of where your energy is at, and getting safe and comfortable with that. So, you know, because for me, like money is the goal. So money's the guide, not the goal. Right? Mm. It's like it's, it's like you know how like when you walk in somewhere and you know with a partner, if they put their hand in the small of your back, it's that feeling of like, oh, that just feels delicious, right? Rather yes. than thinking, that's my goal. If there's going to be a goal, it needs to be God. Mm. Mm, that's so good that's so yeah good. to be that person who's like yes yeah yeah just fulfillment so. fulfillment and that can only come from being on your right path and like knowing your purpose and being in it and flowing in life and enjoying the process it's not just about the dollar because it didn't matter how big my dollar amount was if my relationship wasn't good in my life so it wasn't completely right. fulfilled yeah Mm. And we live in duality, but I'm always like, it has to be both. It has to be fulfillment, which really comes from your connection with source energy. And it has to be, you know, you want to see the money in your bank account as well. It has to be both. And yeah. it's, it's only ever going to feel really good and be aligned. And I think in integrity, when you're creating a connection, my personal belief, when you're creating a connection with source energy, mm. that's so what well, alignment like everything's in the right place because when you make money the goal your ego is going to get activated like crazy mm. yeah and and spiritual work is the transcendence of ego and it is to recognize that it's there and how stealth it is and how it comes in so easily and you know how the judgments can pop up and how we can realize that we're separating ourselves out from other people which happens all the time yeah that feels like right where yes. we're compartmentalized or marginalized etc that separation is there and the truth is we're all one wow so if we're reinforcing separation we are an ego yes that's yes. so good or like if anytime you're reinforcing separation um from from God, from other people, that is when things are just not going to feel connected. And that fulfillment, 
that little gold thread that connects you to feeling joy is just not there because you're choosing for it not to be. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> wisdom. I love it. You have this beautiful like godmother energy. So thank oh, you for thanks. sharing that with yeah. me. Oh, you're welcome. If, what a privilege. I um yeah, just thinking, you know, because you can override from the mental body, the emotional body. But when it comes to your physical body and your energetic body, if you're out of alignment, you're either going to get sick, right? Because the body's going to say yeah. there's something missing here. Or you're going to feel bereft because you're not connected mm -hmm. to spirit. Wow. Right? Like you, can't, you can't outrun your demons, right? <laughs> no, you cannot. I know in the seasons where I overworked, I definitely was having a lot of health issues so it definitely makes sense it's all about balance and trust and mm -hmm. um and still moving but but with so much more trust so much more trust i can just tell in your energy you're very grounded and you've walked the walk and people can trust you like i want to know where would i go to get into your program Awesome. Um, best place to go to find out more is Rebecca Davison Life. So that's R E B E C C A D A V I S O N, okay. and it's dot life L I F E. Uh, but I'm hanging out in two places. Usually on Facebook, I have two groups. I have Elegant Wealth, Elegant Wealth Energetics with Rebecca Davison, and the Intuitive Life Academy with Rebecca Davison. So that's where I'm usually hanging out, posting content and sharing Facebook lives, etc. And that's where you can find more information about joining programs. I love that. Elegant Wealth is a signature program that I do often. It's really that culmination of the last 10 years of all this litmus testing to go what actually shifts the needle. And it's not really what you would expect, right? Like it's because it's not of the mind. I love it's it. Of, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's of all those I, I didn't expect that you would be as spiritual as you are. I, yeah. I just didn't, I didn't get that was what good. The conversation would go that way. And I love it. I love it. Oh, so much. Good. Yeah. That's good. Isn't it? Totally it close. is so good. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show and for everybody who wants to increase their wealth and be fully fulfilled, please check out Rebecca. And if they want to connect with you on Instagram, is that a possibility? That's where my audience hangs out. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's just Rebecca Davison dot life as okay. well. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your heart. And I think this was such a great reminder of the power of forgiveness mm -hmm and having your energy filled right for everybody who's listening and they're like sophia i didn't know you played music you can listen to my music my healing is on spotify and you can search it just by searching sophia spolino also if you're interested in building your own brand and going viral shoot me a dm i want to be able to help you and i've got a free training that i can send your way rebecca thank you so much for being on thank you so much for having me it's a privilege and a pleasure thanks yes. have an amazing night bye bye congratulations for listening to another episode of the social equity podcast every moment you invest in building your brand is contributing to your social equity if you're an exhausted coach or service provider, or you're just getting started building your brand from scratch, I can't wait to give you the first steps to go from zero to 5K months and advance to 10 to 20K months. But why should you take my word for it? Well, I've spent over nine years in the industry amassing over 350,000 followers across platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube as well as hosting a top charting podcast, building a successful service provider business, and coaching powerful women to build purposeful, profitable personal brands. So yeah, you should lean in and listen to the social media secrets, sales tips, marketing strategies, and mindset hacks I share. I want to help you build your dream business that makes real money, leveraging the power of a personal brand on social media. 
because you're ready to quit wasting time on content that isn't working and start bringing in the money you deserve as a purpose-led coach or service provider, sharing your gifts with the world. So for a limited time, I'm giving away your first steps to go from zero to 5K months and advance to 10K to 20K months. Grab my newly revamped Profitable Personal Brand Blueprint, the proven framework to build yourself a personal brand that motivates, inspires, and sells so that your business can thrive the way it should. Just go to the link in the show notes. To ask me questions in real time, join me on Instagram Live for the live podcast show. The schedule is always posted on my profile. My handle is at Sophia Spolino. And if you're tired of posting without a reliable strategy and posting without maximal profit, just like many of my clients were before, then you want to join the Profitable Personal Brand six-month coaching program. Many of you asked how you can get me to coach you on building a profitable personal brand like the one I have. That's why I designed this coaching program, so you could have me coach you, guide you, and mentor you. This is for female coaches, service providers, and entrepreneurs who want to be known for purposeful work and build an extremely profitable personal brand on social media without wasting time. Whether you're a novice at creating or you're feeling stuck hitting a plateau in business that once had consistent revenue and need guidance, support, and coaching to get to your next level, book a strategy call to speak with either me or my team to see if we'd be the right fit to work with each other inside of the Profitable Personal Brand six-month coaching program. Mind you, I am very selective and this coaching program is not for everyone because I'm only taking on serious, purpose-driven, and committed soul sisters inside of my community. If that's you, book your free strategy call now. The link is in the show notes. And if you feel yourself come alive and get excited to take radical responsibility for building your social equity, your personal brand that no one can take from you, leave a five-star rating with a kind review wherever you listen to podcasts and be sure to share the show with a powerful woman you know. And remember, with a positive mindset and a profitable personal brand, all things are possible. So go get up and go get what you want.